Hello everyone, Arxie here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia for another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. We have just departed the Gorville demo day where uh, we managed to score ourselves quite a good swag of extra bales. Who's going to go first here? Oh, that worked out alright. Uh, yes, out of our demo there we supplied the contract that we had on the field and we've got 34 bales here on the back extra plus there's still another four bales down there which we'll have to go back and remember to, remember to collect at some stage so not bad deal to get that plus the 21 grand that we got it and to try out some nice new equipment so if you didn't see that in the live stream go back and check it out it was a lot of fun experimenting and just seeing how all the different bits of equipment worked but we've moved on from that and our main focus today is to get back into getting all the grass picked up off the field and put into the bunker and convert it into silage so we're going to head back uh, this truck needs to go over and pick up the other silage trailer and then we need to go through and set up all the auto drive and everything like that we need for the two trucks to pick up uh, from the forage harvester, dump into the pit and then we're going to use the wheel loader to get the uh, pit compacted. Well at least that is the plan, we're going to try that out and see if it will work. So we're just going to motor on back down here, we're not too far away from the farm now, head on, get these uh, bales unloaded somewhere convenient and then we will uh, be jumping in to the forage harvester and uh, all the bits and pieces that go with that so we'll catch you when we're over there so we made it back here to the yard didn't really have anywhere in amongst this mess of bales to put those ones so we've just backed the trailer there into the shed and we'll leave that there for now i do need to still sort out those alfalfa bales as i explained in the last episode we had a little bit of an issue with those with uh not working with maize plus so we'll go and get that sorted out but we're just going to send a worker over on auto drive to go and pick up the other trailer and I'll go and do that and be back and we'll go and get everything else set up and running at this end to uh, hopefully make this forage harvest go as well as possible. So first things first we're going to set up the truck course here so I'm just going to hit record what I'm going to do is add this onto the existing auto drive course and try and make it as least uh, extra work as we can and try and add not too many extra points so this one is going to be how the trucks will get into the field so we'll have to set up a little bit of a uh, field point here so I think right about there should just about do us we'll just put a tag on that and I think this is uh is it 148 I think 148 we'll call this a uh, weight point and then if we carry on we'll go and connect this back up over here to the course again so it can carry on driving out and then we need to go and create a reverse course into the bunker now I'm going to reverse it from the other side because I think that is going to give us the best amount of space to be able to back into we can nose up into the part between the two sheds and uh, make that work hopefully for getting this backed in so we'll just uh, pull around here of course the truck would normally follow this course and then when we get to right just before it starts really turning off to the left We'll try and get this going up as straight as we can. So we'll hit record again, connect those two points up. Let's go and head on up this way. Nosed up in here next to the shed and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to a point where we can get a decent reverse into the bunker. Give ourselves lots and lots of space to straighten the trucks up. I think one more point. We get one more point for the end. There we go, it's probably a little bit too far, we can adjust that afterwards. Now, we just want to gently back this back into the right position to get into the uh, bunker. And once we've done that, then we can nose out forward and reconnect with this course again, because that will take us all the way around to the course at the uh, main entry, and we can head back off and run everything that way. So, get into about here, go into the pit a little bit. Now I'm going to have to come back and do the label a little bit later. We'll do that so it's right on the end there. If we drive forward, swing this one out and we'll get hooked up here to one of these points. In fact, going straight, straight ahead from here, just bring that up there to there. Should be pretty good. Now, just go down and double check that we've got a left turn up here on the end because I don't think we do connect the course up at that point. So we do need to make sure we can turn left at the end here. Just get the notification to say that the worker has made it over to the other yard, so we'll have to go and hook the trailer up for them. But uh, I think if we just start this little point here, one and two, and turn this onto this course, and that should connect everything back up to get into the field. Alright, so there we go. So the last thing, 
stop the record so we need to go and add that weight point over in the bunker so we'll go over and do that and we should be able to just get this set up and start running so we've got our tip point in there bunker 01 tip now if i just uh, spin around here we did adjust the end of the reverse course i find if you take the two points close as possible one for the last forward point and the first reverse point as close as possible with the change in direction it is much more efficient so we've set this up here on the combine unload which is uh, basically the same as what you do normally for a forage wagon uh, f148 weight is our weight point up here over in the field and then we've got our bunker 01 tip point here in the bunker so i'm just going to press play on that of course it's going to tell me there's no harvester found because we haven't set that up in the forage harvester but uh, we can go over and do that while this gets around into position so over here in the forager we've got that set up to f148 weight on auto drive now so what we should see hopefully is that truck will get into the field and it will eventually come over here now i probably need to press play it is moving already actually if we press play on this we're still stuck on nearest waypoint which is where we finished off last time we we'll get this set up and going now i had to have a tool offset and i believe it was a negative tool offset of about a meter so we'll get that back in there as well and there we go everything's up and running perfect that's a good start i'm pleased to uh, get that working successfully first time so the big challenge now is going to be waiting here riding along with the truck and seeing if it will go and get dumped into the silo or at least into the bunker if that all works perfectly uh, i'm going to be pretty happy we've got the other truck is on its way back and it's already set up on the auto drive course so all going to plan if this all works then uh, we'll be all good to set up the uh, wheel loader to start doing some of the compacting so we'll just ride along here and see what happens with the truck moment of truth we've got a full truck load here we're just going to wait and see what happens when it tries to back here into the bump bunker a good start it's turning what looks to be in the right direction to get into the right spot and uh, we're just going to wait and see if it can get all the way back now i know the other truck is stuck at the gate probably stuck on the sign again at the main entry so we'll have to go and fix that which is a bit annoying it would have been great to see that in the background motoring into the field and going and starting on uh, getting the chopper up and going again but let's just get this all sorted out first because we don't want to get too much chaff in here and then find that the wheel loader spends a lot of time working into the pit and struggling to get it compacted so let's just keep on watching i feel like we're uh, lining up pretty well here which is a very very good sign very uh, good and patient and steady driver i feel like we probably could have made the backing course just a little bit shorter but we have given them the best chance of success uh, they are getting a little bit over to the side though it's a little bit of a worry last minute adjustments are they going to get into the into the bunker they are going to get into there last minute adjustments to get in on the side and there we go they are dumping now i'm not sure actually if they're going to be able to dump it all out they're not because they're not far enough back now i think we might have to put the uh dump point right at the very back of the bunker to get them to push that in all the way they can Otherwise we're going to be doing a lot of work with the wheel loader to push that all up into the pit properly as we see it dumping out there. So time for an adjustment, time to get the other truck up and running. Alright course adjusted, truck is on its way back out, we've pushed the tip point further back into the bunker. We do have this little bit of chaff here we need to deal with but uh, it's actually going to fill up pretty quick looking at this so hopefully it will work out just fine. I did mention last time I did contemplate doing a drive through course but I was just worried it was going to get stuck so let's leave that up and running we'll go and get the other truck unhooked and up and going as well and then we'll be able to come and grab the wheel loader and we'll see about getting the compaction course set up in the bunker. All right well we've set up a park position which is just over to the right hand side of the uh, pit which should be out of the way now it's a bit hard on the map to pick up exactly where we're looking for the silo now I think I think I've got the line in the right place. You can see the double line. In fact, you can see a blue line there for the other silo. So I'm pretty sure we've got this in the right spot. So if we just go back, I'm going to press play. We'll see what happens here. I've set the width of five meters, which is how wide the uh, front of the wheel loader is. We're just waiting to see what's going to happen here. 
can't rotate my camera. Well, I'm just looking, we've completely lost all of our HUD and everything like that and down the bottom. Uh, if I hop out, I can't move. Can't use my controller, can't use my keyboard and mouse. Uh, it doesn't bode very well for what's going on in here. In fact, that was all stuck on a big slope as well. Everything's just going haywire. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we might have suffered some catastrophic system failures with the uh, horse plate, trying to do the bunker silo with the uh, wheel loader here. So we are resigning ourselves to potentially having to do it ourselves, uh, which is not quite what I had in mind, but if we can get it compacted here, we will do it anyhow. So I'm just going to have a bit of a play around. The uh, trucks are running all right in the background. I'm not quite sure what's happened here as they're trying to change direction, but... Hopefully that will work. Uh, of course using a fork doesn't push quite as well as a blade does so maybe we should look at getting something with a uh, pusher on it, maybe something we could hook up onto the, gosh even the uh, the big versatile wouldn't go too bad in here or the, the T8 with the blade on would actually be quite a good option probably for doing some compacting. But let's see if we can spend a little bit of time here with the wheel loader and uh, try and achieve what it is we are trying to do. Could even get a pusher for, the, uh, for this rather than trying to use this fork uh, it might be a little bit better option as well looks like the uh, truck and forage harvest have kind of figured out their differences there unfortunately it's on the wrong side uh, the truck's on the inside it would be better if it's on the outside but they seem to get to a point like that the truck will back up forage harvester will carry on and then everything will be back to playing nice together so uh, hopefully it will sort itself out and it does look like it has so I'm just going to play around here for a little bit more. I do want to get some uh, silage additive into the forager. Uh, we haven't done that yet, and I do have some around somewhere. I can't remember whether it's on the back of the pickup still or uh, where it is. It was floating around. We did have a pallet. I think I might have put it in the uh, might have put it in the shed. So anyhow, that is what's happening. That is the plan. That is the issues, and uh, we're just going to carry on and try and get this done. Executive decision made. We've just gone and ordered ourselves a pusher so we can put that on the front of the wheel loader so we're going to shoot up to the shop very quickly get that picked up on the back of the trailer here and bring that back because I think that is going to work much better than the forks are uh, could even be the reason that the course plate wasn't going to work very well is because we had the forks rather than a blade or something which would push it up so let's give that a go we'll go down to the shop going to get that picked up and uh, hopefully in the meantime nothing goes wrong we've got both trucks up and running so we could end up with quite a full pit depending how long this takes so there we are, a blade all loaded up, it is a 4 meter wide blade, there is a 5 meter option but it is only a 3 point linkage, it wouldn't go on the front of a wheel loader, so we've got the 4 meter option which will uh, connect to the front of a wheel loader at the shop, help us get that put onto the back of the trailer and we'll race back down to the farm, it hasn't taken us too long, so hopefully we're not going to run into too many issues with trucks. I did actually think after we'd left, I might have left the wheel loader in the way for a truck to escape out of the uh, pit anyhow, so we might have put our own blockage in the system but uh, let's head on back down and uh, see about getting that pit a little bit more tidied up because I think we're going to end up with a lot of grass in there that we need to keep on top of so we'll go and uh, see what we can do about that. Well it looks like the truck managed to get into the pit and dumped out all right and we're back here and we'll get this fork taken off the front of the wheel loader here. Get ourselves turned around, we've got the trailer park just over here. We'll get this uh, pusher hooked up on the front and go and see if that makes a difference to how we are able to tackle the uh, tackle getting this pit leveled out. Hopefully we can get that hooked on. There we are. Perfect. Get that unfolded. We'll go and take a little bit of a look at how this works. Just as we've got the next of the trucks coming in. But that's alright. We will get in here and just give it a little bit of a push just to see if this is going to be a better solution. Caught on the lip, but it certainly is. There we go. Look, we can uh, push with a little bit more confidence. Previously, we would have got stuck and had to stop and offload. So that is, I think, going to be a much better solution for our silage than uh, what we were going to do. And we're going to have to uh, readjust the forager in a minute because of where the uh, end point is. It's doing the headlands first, which is actually the last thing the wooden rod did. So we're going to have to go and adjust that and put it on the up and down rows. So we'll just get this out of the way. We'll let that truck get backed in. And while it's doing that, we're going to go and find where our uh, silage additive is and get that all ready to go and put into the forager. Well, that was uh, pretty clever. And she came and put it on the shelf. So we'll get that uh, put down. We'll get that carried out to the forager. We're going to get it put in so uh, we can boost our yield as much as we can. 
Watch the truck there, it seems to be figuring its way back. I think this is the first time this truck has actually emptied out into the bunker. So uh, it looks like it's going just as well as the other one. Hopefully it backs in far enough and can get up some of the pit and uh, get that dumped as far back as possible. But it does look like my plan of uh, riding along lots with the trucks and the forage harvester might go out the window a little bit as we have to keep on top of the compaction. But I guess if we can do that and uh, do a decent amount of compaction, get on top of it to some extent, it won't be too bad and we'll be able to find some time to come out here and sit in the equipment and watch the work get done. But you can see the forager coming around the corner. Looks to be doing a pretty good job right now at the moment and I can hear the truck is emptying out. Let's just go and have a look in the pit and see how it's going. Not too bad. This is going to be all towards the front, but we'll get that fixed and leveled out. So we should get a notification in just a second that the forager is finished. This is the end point, and I'll probably uh, fold everything up and stop. There we go, AI worker has completed their task, which is absolutely fine. It is what I expected. So we're just going to hop up into here. We'll go back over next to our additive, get that put into the forager. And then we'll be able to tell it to start going from first waypoint. I think park about there. There we are. It's going in. See how much of it we use, probably half of it maybe, I think it was about a 40 or 50 litre container. There we go, 24 litres put in there. So now, if we set this to go at first waypoint, I think it runs all the way down the other end of the field. I believe the windrow started all the way down the other end, so put that into there, still all loaded first waypoint, and uh, we'll press go. Let them run off and carry on working, they should take that truck along with them as well. So, we've got most of it up and running, as I'd hoped, just not the uh, compaction here, which is a little bit of a shame, it would have been nice to have that working, but it is what it is, we will get in and get started, and in fact, what are we at the moment? 10% compacted, 254,000 litres already in here, which is pretty impressive. I'm not sure what the truck is trying to do, whether they're trying to move over in the bunker so they can dump off on the other side, that'd be pretty clever if that is what they're trying to achieve. Let's just hop in, see how much they've got in there still. No, they're all empty, so they should be trying to get back on our course to uh, head back to the start of the field. Not quite sure what they're doing there. But anyhow, we'll leave them to it, and we will go and start on the compaction once they're out of the way. All right, time to get busy. Time to get in here and get leveling. Get this all pushed as far through the pit as we can, and uh, get it all leveled out and compacted. Already got a decent amount of silage in there. We've only taken the uh, three headland passes off, so... I'm going to be pretty impressed with how much silage we end up with on this field. It's going to be uh, good to see. So we're just going to crack into a little bit of a time lapse. Watch us do some of this bouncing around in here. It's a bit rough, but we are getting some silage pushed towards the back. And uh, we'll work our way through. Get this is done and tidied up and hopefully ready before the next truck gets here. So sit back, relax, and we'll catch you in a few minutes. Well, 58% compacted, going down slightly as they add more grass in, and over 400,000 litres and be close to 450,000 by the time this truck has dumped that whole load in here, so 
we're getting quite close to a well it's getting pretty full isn't it and I was just thinking I don't actually know the capacity on these uh, silos and I can't remember if it told me in the build menu we might just go and take a quick look so we've got these 8 meter by 39 meter but it doesn't actually tell us what the potential capacity or anything is in it so I guess we're just gonna have to go until it's full we may have to think about moving the uh, <laughs> moving the forage wagons out of the side there and as you can see the truck has decided it's just gonna dump it all on the ground so it's gonna make our hard our job just a little bit harder but that's all right we'll make do with this we'll get it pushed up and uh, we might have to be a little bit more mindful of the next load perhaps we might unload it manually just so we don't end up with this same little uh, conundrum well we've just come for a ride along here in with the truck we've got the other truck over there unloading you can see the top of the uh, pit there we've managed to get it stacked up quite a lot higher we used the uh, silage fork to get that last load that was dumped there in front of us all loaded up and out of the way so uh, this is all going pretty well now someone mentioned in the comments of the last video we've got a few rows of shame here which we will go and tidy those up at the end uh, I'll jump into the forager and we will use ourselves to drive along and the trucks to follow along next to us and hopefully get the rest of that all picked up but uh, we're making some progress there's still a good chunk of grass left in this field uh, I don't think oh we would be probably halfway in fact I'd suggest yeah I'd say we're halfway but we've got over half a million litres in the silo already so uh, it's really really filling up really quick and uh, I probably do actually need to go and grab the tractors and move those wagons out of the way because I'm pretty confident we're going to need to use the other bunker as well unless we were to go and bail this or and wrap it but uh, I think we'd like to keep it all as loose solid so we will do that we could probably actually put some in the um in the harvest store as well but mindful of the fact that we do want to use that for our maize silage come next uh next harvest which is the maize silage all over the road so there are plenty of things to ponder still but anyhow let's let these guys carry on uh, I think the truck is emptying out over there so we will let them get things out of the way and uh, we'll carry on going a little bit nervous there as you see the uh, forest and the silage in the pit just disappeared as we got out of uh, render distance which is a little bit disconcerting but I'm pretty sure it will still be there well, like I said I knew that the uh, chaff was still in here but there we go there is evidence and I reckon this bunker is pretty much full I could probably squeeze a little bit extra in the ends but we're not going to get everything that's left out there in the field into this one bunker so we might as well start getting the trucks to dump into the second pit and uh, we'll make some more silage in there I think instead of changing the auto drive course and getting the trucks to go in there and dump automatically I'll just uh, turn off auto drive when they get here jump in and get them unloaded will be a lot quicker than mucking around with that and we don't have too many more loads it's probably only about maybe half a dozen loads out there if that so uh, I think that'll be a much better much quicker solution than uh, mucking around with that but we've just got to carry on and get this compacted we're at 81 percent we're just short of 700,000 litres in here so not a bad uh not a bad haul of silage and uh, with all those grass bales that we got earlier on and the other grass we already have and the corn silage in the harvest store plus the field of corn over the road we are going to have a decent amount of silage on hand very very soon so uh, things are looking very very promising when we get this finally and I've said it a long time we're into episode 22 I think this one is we've been talking about the feedlot we will finally finally be able to get that up and running very very soon now before the end of the episode we also need to remember to race over and sell the soybeans because I think last time I checked the price was just starting to go down from that peak we experienced earlier on so definitely need to go and make sure that we get that done and see how much money we can make off the soybeans but we're just going to jump out get this truck dumped out and we're just going to carry on and get things finished off here
So we've got the big stack on the left is all finished, that is 100% compacted and just about ready to get covered and we've just been playing around in here getting this one compacted, it's 36%, 160,000 litres but the uh, forager and the auto drive truck have made it back around here where they were going to start on the headlands again which means I've finished all the up and down rows and I think we're going to have a look how much is in the truck but what we're going to do, we're just going to park here in just a second, we'll pull out and get out of the way but uh, we are going to go and jump into the forager and race around and get all those uh, little rows of the wind where I missed, pick all those up from around the field. But uh, there we are, this is going pretty well. Looking at how much we have in each silo, so just pop in here, 158, 160,000, and we ended up with 696,000 in here total, as you can see, 100% compacted. So we'll get that covered very soon, we'll do them both at the same time. But for now, we are just going to jump up in here, should be an auto driver still sitting in the truck so we just hop here into the forager get that turned on again everything lowered down we should be able to go and get some of these rows all done now oops we're a little bit stuck on the tra trailer there right, let's back up uh, i'm not going to worry about going around and picking up all the scraggly little pieces but certainly i think it's going to be worthwhile doing these rows so we'll get the header put down and turn back on and hopefully the truck will come and catch up to us there we go we found that I'll just let it get into position and then we're just going to very quickly go and do these Half dozen or so rows, you can see them quite clearly across the field that the wind rod didn't quite pick up. So once the truck's in position, we'll get this done, race around on a little bit of a time lapse and uh, we'll get it all finished off.
Well, the auto drives work pretty well with me driving. The only downside, when I want to turn left, the truck doesn't know to get out of the way. It's not quite as smart as it was when it was doing it for the worker for course play. But uh, we've just got this last little piece here to do, and we'll be done. I reckon it was worthwhile. We're about two thirds of a truck there, which is about 40,000 litres of silage. So that'll certainly help. Every little bit helps with making sure we've got enough to get the cows fed. So we'll get this little bit done, we'll finish things off, turn it all off, go and get the truck dumped into the pit and then we'll finish getting the bunkers all compacted, all the silage compacted and we'll be able to get a cover put on the second one. This one's ready to go and uh, once we've done that we'll be over to the train yard and train station picking up the train and getting our soybeans sold. So I think there we go, we'll get this, uh, well it's going to want to drive all the way around with us but we'll get that turned off, get the header lifted up and we will just head on down this way park up on the edge of the field and then we'll grab the truck well that wasn't a bad guess at uh, 2 thirds 43,967 litres 67% full so pretty much bang on 2 thirds which is not bad right we're just going to go around the other side back in and get this dumped in and then we'll just go, jump straight into the wheel loader and finish getting it compacted shouldn't take anywhere near as long as the other one because it's so much less so we'll uh, back in here and get it finished off and be good to get this all done that's uh that's an impressive looking bunker though the one on the left that's gonna look great once it's got a blanket on it and all covered up anyhow let's get this in here back in as far as we can it's nice and level open that up and drive out a little bit as it starts unloading keep as much of it in the middle as we can keep going a little bit longer a little bit longer here we go, all done. Right, I'm just going to park the truck up. We're just going to nose it up here so it's out of the way. We'll sort out the trailers and park all those properly a little bit later. But let's just leave that there. Go and jump in the wheel loader and we'll finish compacting this uh, pit. Well, we are 100% compacted on both of our stacks here. We ended up with, I think, 202,000 litres in this one. Should we bring it back up? I think if I stand over here close enough, not quite. 202,000 litres here. And pop over to the other one. 696 so pretty much bang on 900,000 litres of silage which is fantastic that is awesome hopefully it's all going to get covered so we're just going to stand over here and get into a position where we can cover it so put a blanket on it a little bit there that got missed we might just grab the forks and pick that up and put it in the other one and tidy up down this end as well get those bits tidied up and dumped in the other pit and then we'll be able to put a cover on that we did drop a little bit down there uh, which we can't really get out so it's just going to have to stay there for now there we are, that is starting to ferment, which is perfect, and uh, I'm pretty happy with how this one's turned out. But anyhow, we'll go and grab these few little bits and pieces and get this other one covered, then go and sell some soybeans. Well, right, and blanket here on the left one, and that is all done as well. I think we managed to get the little all of it, including the little piece that was just sitting there on its own. A little bit lumpier on this, we didn't bother getting it quite as smooth, but there we go. Perfect, 900,000 litres. Couldn't quite pick up those couple of little bits there, but I think the way they're covered... It might actually ferment those and uh, we'll be good to go. So there we are. That is our silage all done. All 900,000 litres of it. Fantastic, fantastic work. Actually, if we count the uh, grass bales on the trailer, we've probably got a million litres of silage come into the farm today, which is perfect. Right, well, with that all done, we can turn this off and we're going to head on over to the train yard, rent the train and sell our soybeans. Perfect way to finish the evening. 9, 7.45 at night. Perfect way to finish. Engine 5844 is here, so well, let's hop up inside. Now I'm mindful of the fact we've got 350,000 litres of soybeans here to load in, so we're going to have to probably use most of the capacity on the train. I'm not actually sure how much we've got total, but uh, we don't want to go too far past. The brake's there. And stop, and we should be able to pop in here, find some soybeans. There they are, start loading. So there we go, that's the first one filling up we can see that filling up in there just pan back a little bit we do have one more there and i think we can open the top on this one we can so hopefully hopefully we're going to have enough space to take them all in one trip we'll soon find out we're going to be so close to being able to take it all but not quite i don't think we've only got the three carts that we can put soybeans into 300,000 liters so i think not that i'm going to be able to see well actually i can let's see i think there's about 20,000 liters left there you go, 21,794 litres left sitting in the silos. So 31 grand though, it's uh, probably worth taking a couple of trips here on the train to get it sold. But we'll get that one closed, we've got to close the one up the front. 
then let's get ourselves up a little bit further we'll take the train off down to the edge of the map get the prompt to sell it and we'll see exactly how much money we're going to get out of these soybeans this is uh this is really a big milestone for the farm because it's going to knock out a lot of our debt and also leave us some cash that we can invest into the feedlot so i'm looking forward to this i'm very excited well moment of truth we're just about here at the edge of the map the train is going to disappear and we'll get the prompt do we want to sell our crops of course we do 100 percent there we go 428,000 I had forgotten we'd get an environmental score 46,000 off that as well as a bonus so that gives us a grand total uh, what's that 47,400 off those that's uh, 474,000 do my maths probably 474,000 so we're going to uh, clear half a million by the time we've finished with the, the ones that are left down at the train well 20,000 litres let's go and get it sold here we go with the last of the soybeans, 21,000 litres, and we're going to hit sold there and pick up $34,500. So, very quick maths, that was about $550,000 I believe we just made there, which is uh, not too shabby. I'm certainly not going to complain about that at all. Right, let's head on back over to the yard. Well, what a productive day that was. A million litres of silage and... 500,000 plus from selling our soybeans that has uh, really set us up really really well going forward I can see us getting the feed pad built in the not too distant future uh, we've got a few other things we need to probably get done first we've got the oats to harvest and the rest of the maize silage to do as well and keep our animals alive we've got some feeding to get done and as well as getting the milk sold we do have that all trucking through as well the other thing we do have 400 thousand litres of slurry sitting in the four cattle pastures so uh, we may even look now that we've had this grass harvested we may even look at getting some slurry applied to these fields and make some use of it because it's not really worth it any other way so lots going on here for the Canadian cattle farmer I'm looking forward to progressing things a little bit further in this series and seeing where we might end up but I hope you've enjoyed that episode as always thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one